And with Thunderous Metal, we open up episode 278 of Metalomania. Welcome to the program with my friends and my badassery as we celebrate some Maryland crushing metal badass tonight, man. I'm super excited about it. And we're going to open things up right away with my boys out of Hell Pie. What's up, gentlemen? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, how are you? Super excited now, man. I just was looking before we talked here. The last time you guys were on was fucking Easter. The last time I ate Hell Pie on the air was for Easter. We had Hell Pie. So, welcome back. Yeah. Thanks for having us back. Yeah, that that was our Rubber Bullets video premiere. Fuck yeah, man. And I understand we have another premiere we're going to kick everybody in the dick with tonight, correct? It's a little It's a little more uh, subdued. It's not as, it's not as in your face as uh, Rubber Bullets. But it's it's something so you can to remind you that we didn't die yet. <laughs> yeah. It takes you on a really nice journey, so you might yeah. want to get prepared for a little six minute journey. I love it. I love it, man. Well, I guess let's catch up on some things, man. First of all, how, how you been over the last fucking almost year since we talked? Busy. Yeah, right. we've been uh, we've been getting Danny up to speed. He's uh Danny May. He's our new bass player. Yeah, Busy. man. So we've been getting him up. Up, uh, up to speed so we can start jumping on stage again and uh that's working out pretty good we got a couple of new songs that we're reworking and trying to put out some new shit in the next you know six months or so Fuck yeah to a year I, but, i'm yeah. hotly anticipating it man well tell me how that came about how did you guys end up with bringing danny on board and shit uh right after we finished uh all the hard work of uh you know, recording our last album and, and getting that one video put together. Our uh, last guy, Brian, he had to take a leave of absence for for a head, you know, reasons. He had to get his get his stuff together, so he had yeah. to take off. So we were like, "Don't, cool, don't we all got to do?" Yeah, you yeah. Know. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to take you know step back for your health. Yeah. I so we were like, "Cool, man," and uh, well, we, we, we shot out on the interwebs that we need someone to be able to jump in and. And handle doing some help. I get in the kitchen, put their apron on, and throw some spice. And uh, Danny jumped in, and it worked out pretty good. So, so wait, you said we need someone who can step in and play bass for us, and someone else said, "Well, well, Danny may." <laughs> okay, okay. Right. I dig it. I, I dig said, it. I, I said, I, yeah, I may be able to hop in, and you know play some bass for you guys so <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. well you know dan if i may everybody knows uh, uh steve and ed those guys have been on a few times man so I- introduce yourself formally to the metal maniacs brother sure yeah uh so yeah my name's danny um i've been playing guitar and bass for i guess the last probably 10 years or so self-taught and um yeah i was just looking to find some people to rock out with and uh play some music and perform with and uh you know, saw the listing online and checked out some of the songs and, you know, the riffs and the groove, I was, I was banging my head instantly. So I was like, yep, I'm definitely auditioning for this band. And okay. uh, yeah, ever since that first practice, you know, I was a little rough that first practice, but uh, <laughs> I've come a long way and uh, worked really hard to, uh, you know, get a lot better at the songs and, uh, and things like that. So I've just been having an absolute blast and, you know, uh, playing with Eddie and Bones has just been it's just it's so much fun really um so i'm super grateful to be here and super grateful to be part of the band and everything so dude a fun group of guys man i will say i love these cats not just for the music but for the fact that they are a fun group of cats man that we know locally you know we're 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 all kind of a part of this big local kind of metal thing that we got going in maryland man so uh i don't know anybody who says anything bad about the hell podcasts Uh, I'm except, sure we can find somebody. <laughs> except for me later after the show. No, no, no. <laughs> but uh, that's good shit. So, well, I will personally thank you, Dan, because that makes the hell pie keep spinning forward, which is, as a fan, that's what we want the most is for the thing to keep happening and keep sending all vibes. And so so where does that put us today, uh, Bones? Where, what are we looking at? Well, as you sit here today looking out at the coming horizon, t- tell me what to expect from hell pie, man. Yeah, well, Dan brings a just a new punky energy to the band, and which fits perfectly because we've always been kind of a punk thrash. Yeah, and, so, very yeah, much a reason yeah. I love you, brother. Very much a reason oh, yeah. I love you. Yeah, yeah. We're um, 
working on some gigs. So we got Depot in Baltimore. That's Saturday, February 11th with ZFL. Oh, and the, hold up. Right now, that shit off. down. February yeah. 11th at the Depot. Say hello to my buddy Greg at the Depot. Oh, my boy. That's my boy yeah. over there. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's why we love playing there is Greg. Just a great guy. Fuck yeah, he's awesome. Good dude. Amazing sound, man. Amazing. And, and we got a gig in at the Tavern, Southern Maryland, uh, out in April with Mile Dyer. We'll have more information on that soon. Awesome. Fuck Southern yeah. Maryland's been rocking. I just uh, I was at the Slam the Christmas Tree. That's an annual, annual festive event where just the best Southern Maryland bands get together, jam, and they normally destroy about a dozen Christmas trees. So it's, <laughs> it's a great, great social event. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's good shit. I uh, honestly, my intention was to try to make an appearance for that. And that was the day I started feeling maybe that a bug was starting to set in on my nutsack. And I didn't want you all to beat the shit out of me for showing up sick. I wouldn't do you like that, you know? So I am sorry to miss it. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's why it. I didn't make it. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was I was trying, but I, I couldn't do it. Right on. Well, what what are you most looking forward to going forward, Mister Ed, sir? Oh man, um, I I, I want to see what 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 Danny does on when he gets his feet wet on stage. <laughs> that's 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 the most fun thing for me is when I get to get up in front of people and yell at them. Yeah, I mean, oh, I miss that. Plus, yeah, I, I'm a lot funnier when I get on a stage too. For some reason, <laughs> I I tell jokes and shit. And people laugh. Can't believe it. But now yeah, I'm just looking forward to getting back out on stage. You know, I haven't uh, we haven't got thrown down in a while, but um, it's gonna be a good time. Yeah, and we got our buddies ZFL. They kill it like every time. So that's gonna be and as I think that, as it stands now, there's only three bands on that show at the depot. So we're gonna have plenty of time to get up in your ear holes. I'm fucking tear so shit down. Be a hell of a good time. Yeah. Well, you hear that? Anybody in the Delmarva, you know, get your ass over to the depot for that show. What's the date on that, guys, again? February 11th. February 11th. Fuck yeah. Uh, three right days after my anniversary. So maybe if I'm in town, I'll be there. Good. All right. Fuck yeah. Just don't be sick. Yes, we're, lo yeah. we're looking at <laughs> – yeah, we're looking at getting some festivals later in the summer. Um, one that we'd love to get on that you were at last year was Metal Devastation. Yes. Yes. We've been uh, friends with them since the beginning. Yes. So maybe, maybe a road trip for the next one. Hey, we'll make that road trip together, man, because I've already been asked to come back and MC it again next year. So my, I'll be there, sir. Let's, let's make that road trip together. And, you know, I got to tell you, as a fan of both the Metal Devastation Radio Cats and that festival and Hell Pie, I believe that Hell Pie logo would look pretty goddamn perfect on that flyer for that thing, buddy. All right. Uh, yep. That's the good yeah, the shit. Pit from Hell didn't open that show, but we we can make sure it opens at the next one. Hey, you know what did though was a barbecue pit. So I was good. I was good. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so that festival had a um a lot of negative press that they it, used to their advantage and just um it did. It, killed it. Yep. it did, and I will tell you so much of the you know stereotypes that they give that they hang around the necks of us metalheads were undone all day long man the place was immaculate nobody was disrespectful the place wasn't trashed the bands threw down and kicked ass it was an amazing day man an amazing event yeah good shit and i very much look forward to standing on that stage next year and saying and now get ready to eat some motherfucking hell pie so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll get to Nashville for that one. Fuck yeah, them that them them fucking Tennessee dudes can eat. Some, they'll throw some hot sauce on it, but they'll eat it. Yeah, <laughs> that's how we. That's how we like it. Fuck yeah, brother. Hey, tell them we're bringing the old bay. They can bring the hot sauce, and we'll meet in the middle. You know, shit. Hey, <laughs> I, I just got some old bay hot sauce the other day. I didn't even know that was a thing. My favorite shit in the world, man. I that's put that shit on. I put that shit on pussy. So, <laughs> that's pretty um, good. <laughs> That's the good stuff, man. Shit. Hey, I, I wouldn't toss a salad without it. But anyhow. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> Excuse me. You know, fucking Got a crouton in my throat. burning that O-ring and that balloon not down. But that's good shit. Well, tell me about 
what will be the next release, man? Are is the plan to put out some singles? I guess as you get Danny more and more involved, are you going to put out some singles? What have, I know this video was put together, which we'll talk about in just a second. But you know, what is kind of the plan as you develop some of these songs forward? Because I every single band I talk to these days has a different approach. Some people are waiting to put a full release out. Some people are like, man, I'm doing EPs until I die. You know. Right. And some people are like, man, it's all singles now. Just single the fuck out, you know? So what is your yeah. approach? I mean, everything's digital. Like, no one really buys whole albums anymore anyway, so. Unfortunate. An unfortunate yeah. thing. Which is, you know, that takes away, like, the, the whole theming experience where you try to make it go from one place to another. Right. Which is what we always try to do. So we usually, we'll probably stick with our program, which is usually to try to put together five to six songs, record them, and you know, two or three sessions, so they have the same feel all the way through them. Right, that same and, energy, and that right? way, yeah, that way we can, you know, take you somewhere. And it doesn't just we're not just shooting random shit at you every once in a while, but we probably should at least get one out there that's new uh, and just drop a single, and then we'll we'll kind of just keep working on new shit. And once we get a bunch of them, we'll go see Mike Bozier at Oblivion. What's up, Mike? And uh. And 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 then lay them down and put them together like we usually do. So, uh, and we're not going to change our shit too much, but uh, yeah, we probably should put out at least one single to, like I said, remind everybody we're still here. Yeah, right. <laughs> we still got a pulse, motherfucker. The, the pandemic didn't get us yet. Goddamn right. I, I got yeah, a plus, fever. Plus, we didn't get to uh, gig at or tour much with the our current cd right because I, of member changes right so um, that that was actually yeah. going to be my next question you know as you do develop more things with danny and you really i mean in, in many ways the last release is kind of unsupported live right i mean that's right. very true so when you do bring that out and put it on stage it will be its first delivery that way so you know, uh, is, is it going to be a full arsenal by the time you're hitting the stage again? And will it be this mixed with some new things? And that's kind of the approach going forward. It'll be some of the, the newest stuff, but we always, we play everything from the beginning all the way through, usually most of the time, because, you know, we have at least two songs on each album that we don't ever want to give up. So <laughs> we try not to just play the new stuff or just the old stuff. So we usually, you know, and we might even throw in a cover or two just to make it fun. Oh, yeah, right. Well, fun live, man. That's what Hell Pie does, dude. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. let, let's 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 be real. So, that's good shit, man. Well, and for everybody out there following along, what is the best way to make sure they don't miss it, man? As you do release, what is your premiere? I, I mean, let me tell you the truth. Metalomania is happy to be a part of any releases, and we want to be out forefront with you guys to put it out into the world. Um, but if somebody wants to purchase it, somebody wants to be able to support the band further, what are the best ways to do that these days? Yeah, help it's I. all help. Oh, <laughs> has got links to everything. What, what do we have, Steve? Yeah, helpi.com and helpi.bandcamp.com and all the social media. Um, there's only one Help High band, but there's a Help High video game, which we're also in. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but uh, yeah, easy to find online. Help High band. Fuck yeah. I tend to stick to the uh, band camp stuff, you know. I You can go there. You can listen to music before you buy it. It's a really good thing. And, and, well, and honestly, and speaking of, on that, what are your thoughts as we lose as metalheads? Now, I, pop set music is a different thing. It's a different animal country and all that shit. They're their own animals. Metal, I've always been of the belief that a full-length release, for exactly the reasons you pointed out a second ago, Ed, it is a journey. It starts here, it takes you here, it takes you here, and it takes you here. Along the way, you see the diversity of the band. You see some lyrical diversity. You see some, you know what I mean? It's it's a journey. I and I pose the question to all of you, if I will. I'd love an answer from each of you, but have we lost something there, gentlemen? I think we have. I think I think we've lost a lot of attention span. Oh. Is what we've what we've lost oh. is because no one remembers what happened ten years ago, anyway. And then now that everything's sliced up so small, no one wants to sit through anything that lasts more than three and a half minutes. So we don't have the 
the staying power to, to actually absorb something longer than a sound bite, which is really killing us as far as being able to get through to people. Yeah, I still, uh, I still, buy, I still buy CDs. Of bands I love, I will buy the CD and listen to it how it's supposed to be. Me too. Um, Dan's a little younger. How 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 do you listen to your your, your music, Dan? Oh uh, yeah. So mostly, I mean, for me, it's mostly Spotify and YouTube. Um, just you know, it's it's most convenient. Um, it's a really good way to find new artists as well. Um, and then, you know, to support the bands, I'll like to go to their shows or buy their merch or things like that, you know, or one thing I think is really cool is, um, you know, buying a physical copy of a CD or something like that. If you really like the art as well, because you get kind of that whole package of, you know, the cool art, the cool music, it's something that you can hold on to, you know, and I think that's really valuable. And I think, uh, I feel like a lot of, uh, a lot of people, I guess, like kind of at my age are kind of missing out on like a lot of that cool stuff, um, and and yeah to kind of add on you know to what eddie said it's um we live in an interesting time where there's kind of like pros and cons to this whole sort of internet age right like uh you know on one hand just about anyone can make content and make dope songs and put it out there and that's awesome um but you know yeah we're kind of restricted to attention spans you know that TikTok attention span kind of <laughs> thing that's going on these days and uh, it yeah. is what it is you know and um, there's always going to be pros and cons, but, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, I think it's an interesting time for music, but I feel like a lot of the, the creative power is, is within a lot of the artists mostly, which is, you know, generally a good thing, but so, yeah. It leans that into the public domain. And, and what I mean by that is we are becoming creators of what we consume. And in a way, that's good, and it should be a good thing. But honestly, the trend is not so uh, promising, in my opinion. You know, a titty is going to always out fucking do a great, valuable song. And <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I, TikTok is a thing. You know, I'll be honest with you. I could go on a rant forever about this. But when we started this show, we are now down to where we have to keep it at an hour and a half or less. Or else, oh, my God, we're going to break the fucking algorithm on the Internet. When we did the show for the first three years, four years, this was a four or five hour show every week. And I still have trouble comprehending that that's too long for people because I grew up listening to the Grease. Well, you guys are local. The Grease Man. You, who remembers the Grease Man? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, right. And th that dude was 40 hours a week or whatever on the radio. And we listened to all of it. He had five hour jokes with no punchlines. <laughs> and we listened. And I... <laughs> And so it's troubling for me. It's I struggle to accept that we can't devour things that last more than 35 seconds, man. I worry about the fucking staying power of the young cat's dick if you can't pay attention for, you know, are you in the middle of fucking and then you're like, oh, rabbit, you know, like what the fuck? <laughs> you know, I, it's, I, I just, it's weird to me, but we've, we're catering to the rules and we're cutting down to size and we're doing all these things. But, and I guess my counter thought to that is, in pop music, I, I'm always shitting on other genres of music and fuck them if they can't take it. But, you know, if you buy a Taylor Swift CD, the pictures are six pictures of Taylor Swift. You know, you can get that on the fucking internet. Who gives a shit? But if you buy a fucking Hell Pie, if you buy a Skeletal Remains, if you buy, you know, there's art, there's fucking... That band has sat around agonizing over the order of the songs even. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Exactly. And, and that matters. You know, and that matters to me. As a as a consumer of metal music, that seems like something important that we're losing if we, you know. Forgive me. I could rant about this forever, man. The attention span thing bugs me. Come on, people. What the fuck? It, do, be do better. Well, that's why we still try to put together at least six songs. Uh, you know, we used to try to do 13 tracks, or at least 10 tracks and, and three goofy intros or skits or something. <clears throat> so at least you have like time to let it soak in but so, uh so we try to at each. least give you six <laughs> so that way that way you, you, if you get through the first three you're like hey wait a minute <laughs> what, where else am i going to end up if i keep listening and then it's like oh look look at all these lyrics i can read because i can't understand what the fuck he's saying anyway <laughs> <laughs> and there's pictures hey uh, you usually get uh, Pete from uh, Java Fiend usually does some really sweet ass artwork for us too. Yes. So I mean, right. if you're you know if you can stare at that for 15 minutes, that's at least two and a half songs. 
Fuck yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget that new CD smell. Yeah, oh, right, <laughs> right, man. Dude, I love pulling the cellophane off of a brand new CD. That shit makes my dick hard. That shit is better than Viagra, baby. What the fuck? I don't get it. You mm. know? God damn it. <laughs> we'll send you a case of CDs. Oh, oh shit. Well, I'm gonna do a I'll do an open it video where I gotta hide my genitalia, but you know. <laughs> well, that show we got coming up is right before Valentine's Day, so that should come in handy. We might have to do some val. Hey, we're we're talking on the holidays, you know. We might have to do some Valentine's Day things. So, uh, well, you know, speaking of erections, tell me about this new video, man. Tell me, give me a little bit. Of, <laughs> how, how's that for a transition? There you go. Um, Good segue. Yeah, right. Tell me, about, <laughs> tell me about this video, guys. <laughs> Bones is getting creative and, and trying new uh, new ways of. Um, exp- uh, hustling for change so he uh he's been messing with lyric videos and uh oh i, I thought you were going to talk about his prostitution thing oh right right, right, <laughs> no, right, right well, the video right right, right. Okay. well okay. that hasn't been panning out so he started doing videos <laughs> 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 wait 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 do you expect me to believe that he got that round mouth from eating square meals because come on now <laughs> right yeah <laughs> okay i'm sorry go ahead brother <laughs> yeah so it's uh yeah so i was working with some um animators and going through some some of their uh, profiles, cat- or catalogs, and what we weren't even thinking of doing a video. Now I'm a project manager. I'm all about planning and everything together, but the best stuff happens just falls into your lap. So going through this footage, um, and I just I said this would be perfect for World of Pain. It tells the story. It tells the story of um, being shipwrecked getting on land and finding nothing but death and despair and just just disaster um walking further inland to find some some sign of life and it just keeps getting darker and darker and then to realize when you're on your way back and you find your ship is tipped over and and ruined now you know you'll forever remain in a world of pain all is lost yeah yeah awesome so that was my vision of the the song but um yeah i I feel like once you hear it you'll understand because the um bozier helped put together some of the effects in the song the the video effects there are no video effects what you hear of like shipwrecks and stuff like that is in the actual song and again bozier and ed had a big part in that and it just kind of it just kind of worked out our old video evp that was the same thing it was like that'd be cool for like a 50s cartoon on top of this song and it just worked it just so worked. yeah fuck yeah. yeah i Actually, love nothing more than finding good footage to go along with a good song but go ahead i'm sorry ed what were we saying yeah the funny thing about evp even though that was like three albums ago when i was writing that song i had this cartoon in my head and I, and I told Bones, I said, hey, man, this is what I, 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 when I heard the song, I was thinking about this whole black and white cartoon. It had these weird ghosts and like this, you know, skeletons and crap. He went out and found this Betty Boop cartoon and was like, hey, I found a cartoon that's kind of like what you said. And then when I watched it, I was like, that's the fucking cartoon. That's the one I was trying that I was that I had watched that I wrote the song thinking about. It was, was it was bizarre. And yeah, the, was video, the movie is unedited. And when there's like a, a ghost is flying across the screen, that's when Eddie's going, ah, it's just. Yeah, it synced up so weird. It was creepy as hell. Just dropped in place, hit play. And I was like, this is perfect. Again, things just fall into place sometimes. Damn right. Amazing. Fuck yeah. Some things are meant to be, my brother. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. So this video is World of Pain um, from Long Gone into oblivion well fuck yeah what do you say everybody how about we play it man let's do it fuck yeah enjoy this jam and then we'll play a couple more and right behind it our buddies in nomos are going to be coming in to continue the local area badassery that we have in store for everybody here tonight on metalomania bones ed dan i fucking love you guys man a fan forever you got over here in the crypt i promise you love you too man Thanks for having us again. Thank, Thank you. you. It was real fun. Hey, we'll talk again soon. 
as long as it's about your dick, that's fine with me. <laughs> hey, I promise. My favorite topic, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it. World of pain. <sighs> this is Ed with Hell Pie. You are watching Metalomania with Crip and Scully.
suppose nothing hurts you. Only pain. <laughs>